Hi, everyone. I'm Eric Gensler, founder of Capacity Interactive. I am a white man with brown hair, brown eyes, and a uh, white, blue, and um, long sleeve shirt. And you know what? I am going to turn my light on because I forgot to. Uh, one more. There we go. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm coming to you from the traditional territory of the Lenape, Manhattan's original inhabitants who called the island Manahata, which means hilly island. And we do this because the teaching of the US, of US history in schools and museums has left out many voices and difficult truths of forcibly removing people from lands they inhabited in order to create an idealized nationalistic identity. So it's important for us to recognize and share the history of our land. I also want to take this moment to say Black Lives Matter, and we are angry and saddened after the senseless gun violence at the hands of the police. Um, I also want to acknowledge the is a sad day in, in America where um, Breonna Taylor's murders were um, not uh, brought to justice. And um, I also want to acknowledge that we work very hard to share our platforms with uh, diverse backgrounds and voices. Um, but I want to acknowledge today that our participants of our panel are all white and we believe that diversity comes in um, many forms and we celebrate that at, at capacity. Um, I also want to say this is a challenging time to be an American and I want to use this platform to say please register to vote and please use your um, platform or whatever platform you have to um, share the message of the importance of registering to vote. As part of our ongoing work to be more inclusive, we have evolved our speaker introductions to include visual descriptions, pronouns, and land acknowledgements. And we're far from experts in this, but we'll pass along resources and our follow-up materials for this event so you can join us in this learning process. So TikTok, um, why we're here today, has been in the news a lot lately. And I personally love the platform, which now has 100 million active users in the US. And I love the uh, app and um, the people who use it love the app. And uh, we're going to hear a lot more about that. Um, but what's really cool about it is its unique algorithm that quickly delivers organic social following if your content resonates. So even if you decide that uh, TikTok is not right for your organization, there are many valid reasons for this, especially now. We think it's really important um, for arts marketers to at least uh, know and understand what TikTok is and how it works and the potential of what it could do for you. So in this webinar, you'll first hear from two of my uh, Capacity Interactive colleagues, and then you'll hear from arts marketers from American Ballet Theater and the Carnegie Museum, who will share how they're using the platform to build a following and excitement for their organizations. And there'll be time for your questions at the end in the last 10 to 15 minutes. So please, anytime throughout, enter your questions in the chat, and we will get to as many as we can at the end. Um, this session will live on our YouTube um, channel, so click subscribe and you'll hear about this and other um, sessions, and then you'll have it available to share with anyone who may have missed it or um, watch it later. So first up, please join me in welcoming uh, Capacity Interactive's Managing Director and TikTok enthusiast, <laughs> Christopher Williams, who will kick us off. Take it away, Christopher. Thank you, Eric. Uh, as he said, my name is Christopher Williams. I am a white male. I have a shaved head. I am wearing a light blue checked shirt today. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I am coming to you from Kent, Connecticut. And Kent, Connecticut sits on stolen land of the Pogasset, Mohican, and Muncie Lenape people. So I'm going to spend my time today discussing the general landscape of TikTok. So if TikTok feels mysterious to you, perhaps even silly to you, I hope these introductory comments can give you some insight. So out of curiosity, I actually started noodling around on TikTok a little bit more than a year ago. My usage of TikTok really took off um, when the pandemic started because I started to go to TikTok as a place to escape um, and to be entertained, to feel light. Uh, according to my screen report at the time, I was spending between 15 and 20 hours a week on the platform. Uh, so 
rather than feel any shame about that, uh, I actually just let myself uh, lean in and really fall in love with the platform. Certainly it was my, was my research period. So if TikTok truly is new to you, in short, it is an app for making and sharing short form video. You'll hear more specifics about the app, its content, and the very special nature of the TikTok community from today's other guests. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. What I really wanna talk about is why now? Why are we choosing now to talk about TikTok and spend time together? So I think that's for a couple of reasons. Um, in July, I, many of us experienced a bit of a wake up call, I think, during the Facebook boycott. And that got us asking, what alternatives do organizations have when the major social media players like Facebook and Instagram are off the table? You know, where can we find scale? Certainly YouTube is here for us. It's user base is second only to Facebook, but in a pandemic world where we increasingly rely on digital and seek to diversify our channels for distribution, what is next? You know, is it Twitter? Is it Reddit? Where do you go? What I can tell you is TikTok already has more global active users than Twitter and Reddit combined. Monthly active US TikTok users are up nearly 800% from J January of 2018. So certainly we're spending time on today. It's always been important in our consulting work to prioritize where we can get the biggest return for limited time, money, and human resources. Those things are critical when you serve uh, the nonprofit arts constituency. But as TikTok's popularity continues to build, uh, the platform really is rapidly becoming a viable digital distribution channel. It has its own unique strengths and now a, leg a legitimate scale amongst uh, users in the US. Um, I do wanna take a deeper dive into the TikTok user base. Uh, before I get to that though, I want to share just a very brief history of how TikTok came to be. And I also feel compelled to address the political elephant in the room. I think if any of you are going to leave today and then begin to explore the platform, you may be asked questions about these things within your own organization. So I want to arm you with some of that fuel. Uh, so TikTok, known as Douyin in its home market, was launched in China in September of 2016. It was launched globally as TikTok the following year. Its parent company is ByteDance, which might sound familiar from the news. ByteDance also owns the hugely popular Chinese AI-powered news aggregation platform called Toutiao. In late November 2017, ByteDance acquired a popular rival app, also China-based. Uh, that app was called Musical.ly, and it was required for a reported $1 billion. TikTok was merged with Musical.ly in August of 2018 with app users from Musical.ly, those accounts being migrated into TikTok accounts. And that was actually a strategic on their part because it was viewed as a pathway for the Chinese app to actually enter the US market because Musical.ly already possessed a sizable American audience. Since that time, TikTok has really snowballed in popularity despite only being released in 2016. It was one of the most downloaded apps of the 2010s. Uh, according to TikTok itself, the app has been downloaded about 2 billion times globally. Okay, so I'm going to try to take about 90 seconds and address the politics around TikTok currently. I will just say, like, this story is changing constantly. This is what I know as of this moment in time, certainly what I understand as well. Uh, certainly, if anyone has any additional information, we can talk about that later. Um, here's what I know. In August, the Trump administration threatened to ban TikTok unless it found a US buyer. Some say that the White House wants TikTok banned because they believe that the Chinese Communist Party has demonstrated the means and motives to use the app to threaten our national security. So the Commerce Department is actually set to remove TikTok from app stores this past Sunday, but that ban was avoided because the administration blessed a deal for TikTok to partner with US company Oracle as their technology provider hosting all of their US data. This deal also included a commercial partnership with Walmart. So ultimately, this satisfied the White House's concerns, uh, at least in that moment. And the deal still has to be approved by the US government. And if so, it will result in a new US-based US company called TikTok Global. There's certainly a lot more detail and nuance about 
that deal and it seems very fragile. I'm already reading things about another ban on the app starting this Sunday. So certainly something for us to all keep our eyes on. No one can predict what the president will do, but that is what I know and understand at this moment in time about TikTok. One other thing I will say just about how the TikTok community feels about this. Certainly they love their app. They love their community. There's a creative, amazing group of people. Um, here's how they feel. Um, they believe that their data privacy is important and they don't believe that this is a TikTok problem. They believe this is a social media problem, that social media in general needs oversight, which I tend to agree with. Um, all right, so let's talk about um, TikTok users. So TikTok obviously is still a relatively new platform, so there's really limited data available to us at this point. Uh, here's what we understand. Uh, most of us commonly understand that TikTok is dominated by Generation Z. So Generation Z, of course, being the demographic cohort succeeding millennials. Gen Z are the people who were born between 1987 and 2012. Um, some of you might already be going, well, this is just too young of a group of people for me, but I urge you to keep listening. TikTok is, is experiencing very rapid growth. So while it is still currently dominated by users from Generation Z, that is really changing. So there are about 800 million active users of TikTok. And that puts it ahead of LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat. Um, just to give you an idea of how other apps perform in comparison, it took Instagram six years from its launch to gain the same amount of active users that TikTok managed to achieve in under three years. And for Facebook to hit the same monthly active users mark, it took nearly four years. So that really helps us understand the very rapid growth rate of this platform. When we look only at the US, we see that TikTok has more than 100 million monthly active users. So that's a bit less than 30% of the current US population. To put the growth rate of the US users in perspective, this time last year, there were approximately 39 million US active users. So we've gone from 39 million a year ago to 100 million today. So I mentioned a second ago that the age breakdown of users is changing. Interestingly enough, uh, I thought it was interesting, 60% of users on TikTok are between the ages of 20 and 49. So certainly I understand as a marketer, that's too big of an age swing. Uh, so, but if we break that down into pieces, 30% of TikTok users are between the ages of 20 and 29, and another 30% of those US users are between the ages of 30 and 49. So, you know, I would argue for, for arts organizations right now, a lot of us for the work that we're doing and promoting, all, all of those users are valid targets for us right now. And of course, 60% of them are using TikTok. How often? Uh, what we currently know is that the average amount of time that people spend on the platform is 52 minutes a day. 90% uh, of TikTok users visit the app more than once a day. And in fact, uh, on average, users open the app about eight times per day. So, uh, you know, that usage might sound a little familiar, familiar to you because it is very similar to the amount of time uh, that we used to report people using Facebook and Instagram platforms. Um, before I leave you, I just want to mention a couple of things. Reels, Reels is the Instagram uh TikTok content type that launched just very recently. Uh, I know a lot of people are asking like, will Reels just sort of kick TikTok out of the market? We all remember when stories came about and really put a big dent in what Snapchat was doing at the time. So I just mentioned Reels because it's out there and nobody really knows what it's going to do yet. Um, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, and lastly, advertising. We Advertising is possible on TikTok. If you're interested in doing that, head on over to TikTok for Business. They are definitely incentivizing people to use the platform right now. They've taken a lot of the things that we have learned from Facebook advertising and built that into this platform. It's it's very robust already as a new advertising platform. Um, and it has a lot of the targeting tactics that we're all very used to relying on things like website remarketing, CRM targeting, lookalike targeting, there's conversion tracking. So if you're interested in that, check it out. By no, no means am I saying like we're all ready to advertise on TikTok. I think for a lot of us, just making the content shift into TikTok is a big change. But I did want to make sure that I mention it before I pass it over to my colleague, Adrian. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Christopher. Um, let's keep this train moving and bring up um, Adrian Yablin, a senior analyst at Capacity Interactive, uh, who has been 
ahead of the curve on TikTok. I remember talking to you about this a year ago, um, and you were already uh, been a fan for a while. So, um, Adrian, walk us through the platform and show us some awesome TikTok content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as Eric said, I'm Adrian Yablin. Um, I am a white person with short, uh, short, dark brown hair. I'm wearing a black short sleeved button down uh, shirt. My pronouns are they, them, or she, her. Um, I am also joining you from Lenape territory, specifically the Canarsie Native American tribe, um, who were driven out of this area by European settlers and traders, um, which, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be here even though it is occupied territory. But um, moving on to TikTok and the experience, a lot of people have never even opened the app perhaps, especially maybe in the arts administration world. So what's even on there? What do people use it for? And the most distinct description is it is short form video content that infinitely scrolls. Uh, that can be hard to conceive if you've never experienced it. So I'll be showing some examples throughout this. Um, even though the main um, creative aspect of it is visual. Sound is actually also super important, which we'll get into a little more later. Um, a lot of people have a misconception that the majority of content on TikTok is teenagers dancing and lip syncing, um, which there is a good amount of, but it is so much more than that. Especially with the pandemic starting, content just exploded into like so many niche things, like content for everyone, by everyone, for anyone. There's just so much out there. Um, but I'm sure you're asking yourself, like, how is that relevant to the arts? Well, I conveniently have put together a bit of a, a compilation for you, which uh, we can share now. Y'all cannot sit here and tell me with your whole chest that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart does not slap. Watch this, watch this, listen. Fortunato y uom que prende ogni cosa per un verso E tra i casi e le vicende da ragion qui tar si fa Don't look around, look at where you are Look at where you started The fact that you're alive is a miracle Stay alive. Oh, man, it was excruciating narrowing that down. Let me tell you, I have a massive folder of examples. Um, also, if the person lip syncing to Hamilton looked familiar, that was indeed a great British Bake Off contestant who at one point was a theater manager for the Royal Shakespeare Company. Um, yeah, those are just a few examples of some like arts relevant content, but beyond like the specific nature of what people are creating, what part of what makes TikTok so special is this extreme focus on like encouraging collaboration and iterations and just sort of letting people really take things and run with them. Um, for example, uh, certain like pieces of music or audio will trend and it's actually really easy to like go to that audio, see what everyone else has been doing with it and then sort of take it and put your own spin on it. Um, and that can take many, many iterations. Um, I've put together a sort of miniature case study uh, from when um, a clip of Megan Thee Stallion's song Savage was super popular on TikTok, which I guess was March, but it feels like it was so much longer ago. Um, but it first blew up with a dance that a TikTok creator uh, came up with, um, and then it's got in many other directions. So I can start with a clip of um, sort of the original dance for context. Hey, so you back, huh? I'm a savage. Yeah. Classy, bougie, uh, ratchet. Yeah. Sassy, moody, hey, nasty, hey, yeah. hacking, stupid, what was happening, Whoa. Yeah. what was happening, Whoa. I'm a savage, yeah, hey, so you back, no. ah. I'm a savage, yeah. classy, bougie, uh. ratchet, yeah. sassy, moody, hey, nasty, hey, yeah. hacking, stupid, what was happening, Whoa. what was happening, Whoa. I'm a savage, 
Now, that's all well and good and fun, um, but it can be easy to get sort of fatigued by hearing some of these sounds over and over again. So sometimes people will come up with really creative variations on this content. Um, for example, we have a multi-layered derivation of it coming up um, that is, uh, someone did a dramatic reading of the lyrics that was then remixed, that someone then did a dance interpretation to that mimics the originals. So it's easier to just, just show it to you. <laughs> What's going on, folks? I saw this video on my For You page. I'm a savage, classy, bougie, ratchet. Just gonna grab the instrumental real quick. Got the timing right and added some effects to the vocals. Savage, savage, classy, bougie, ratchet. I hope y'all enjoy this as much as I did. I'm a savage, classy, bougie, ratchet. Sassy, bougie, nasty. Acting stupid. What's happening? What's happening? I'm a savage. That one gets me every time. Um, but yeah, people really take things and run with them. And content like that really just spreads, you know, I guess virally, you could say. Um, but people on there are so creative, it's almost unfair. I've seen things go in directions I never would have anticipated. And it's just so, it makes me giddy, which is part of why I talk about it so much, because it's just this never ending stream of creativity. Um, but the other main strength, of TikTok is actually its algorithm from like a user perspective. Um, one of the first things uh, you encounter when you open TikTok as a user is your For You page, which is a selection of recommended videos. And the algorithm has got me pegged like a million percent at this point. So I figure uh, to get me get to know me a little better, I can share a sampling of, of mine as personal as it kind of feels. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Life Tips with Midriffs. Things in my pretentious horror lesbian apartment that just makes sense. I don't know what that tells you about me, but the algorithm knows some stuff. Um, and the more that you interact with content, like liking things, commenting things, you can follow specific creators, you can follow hashtags. The more data you give TikTok, the better and better the content gets. So I've been on TikTok for well over a year at this point, and that's probably why it's gotten so specific to my taste, but it just, it just keeps getting better, which is part of why I keep staying on it. Um, in terms of like actually creating content for the platform, Production quality is all over the place. Some people just hit record on their phone and are like a talking head. Um, some people do like professional film editing and then sort of tweak it to uh, match the platform. Um, you can actually gain quite a bit of clout just from mastering like really clever, like film editing transitions through the apps in ed editing uh, tools. So you can really try out a lot of different methods. Um, I've put together an example of just pulling some clips from my phone and like setting them to music. So you can get started pretty easily, but the best thing you can do really is to spend time on the platform, see what people are doing and get inspired. But for, for demonstration purposes, I can share a demo of uh, making one very quickly. I have some short video clips that I took of my plants earlier because I am insufferable. So I'm going to select a bunch of those. Doesn't really matter what order. Now TikTok is going to attempt to like sync some sounds to it, but I'm going to ignore their choices because I already have an idea of what I want. So I'm gonna go to more. I have some favorites. Perfect. So I'll go with that. Some effects or text. Let's see. That should do it. Pretty simple, just using existing footage 
and you can do a lot of stuff with just these tools alone. I could keep going, believe me, but uh, that's my time, so I'll uh, pass it along. That was fantastic, Adrian. I feel like I know you even better now. Um, and I hope that made everyone even more excited about uh, TikTok. Someone asked in the um, chat, who, what organizations are using TikTok? Um, are there any individuals on that um, aren't using TikTok and, and now want to? Um, feel free to use the chat and let us know. So um, our next guests are with American Ballet Theater. And before we turn it over to them where I'll be interviewing them about their uh, experience with TikTok, we wanna watch some um, ABT TikTok content. So let's start with that. He, he over here. Yeah, I heard he got that hot new thing. It's called Switch. Let's get it going. <laughs> Love that. Welcome, Connor and Sarah. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. It's such a joy to talk about TikTok. I have to say, it's definitely been one of the lights of my life for the last six months. So I'm excited to be here. My name is Connor Holloway. I am a white gender non-conforming person with curly poodle-like brown hair. I have on a gray wool turtleneck sweater with this fun little drawstring. My pronouns are shin shins, and I am coming to you from the ancestral and occupied lands of the Munsee Lenape. These people are not relics of the past, but continue to steward this land with care, vitality, and tradition. Sarah? That was beautiful, Connor. My name is Sarah Roy. I'm a white female. I identify as she, her, hers. Um, I'm director of marketing communications and partnerships at American Ballet Theater. And I'm coming to you from Tallahassee, Florida, uh, which is known for the Florida State Seminoles, but it's actually um, the land of the Mesquite the Muskegians. So um, I'm delighted to be here today to speak with you all. Awesome, so excited to have you both. So um, kick us off by telling us why uh, you decided to join TikTok as an organization. Sure, I'll take point. Uh, so we, of course, uh, at American Ballet Theater, um, were surveying the communication landscape and considering TikTok as a platform. I would say we are still in the beta, uh, like test the test kitchen for, with TikTok. Um, we haven't promoted our presence widely across our other platforms. We're just creating content right now. Um, you know, we really lean on our network and uh, our executive director, Kara Barnett, introduced us to a huge champion of ABT named Larry Milstein. And he's the co-founder of Prism, um, which uh, is a Gen Z marketing consulting agency. And he offered to help set us up and really you know, get us off and going on TikTok. Um, and we, we really in this pandemic environment have talked about how do we show up in the world? We are not performing on the world's greatest stages right now. We just out, missed out on our eight week season at the Metropolitan Opera House. And so we're just using this time to really innovate and tell the stories of our people um, and engage in our communities in new ways. Yeah. Um, I love that you all decided to have um, TikTok be artist led and and have, you know, Connor's obviously a, a dancer. I'd love to hear about how that works. Yeah, absolutely. Well, also to Sarah's point, since this was a major miss for us to not be on stage during this time, I will say something that was so attractive to me about TikTok, which 
personally, I didn't even join the app until a couple months into into COVID. So I'm not a long time user. I'm not, I wasn't even very familiar with the app at all. In fact, I, I downloaded it and kind of let it sit for a while. So when we met with Larry at Prism, he sort of opened our eyes to the opportunity that exists on TikTok. And the way that he did this, that was just so convincing was by delivering us some of these very um, apparent stats, which is um, a hashtag like dance, which lives on TikTok already, has generated views of 204 billion. Um, a tag like ballet has 2.1 billion. Dance challenge, 13.1 billion. Ballerina, 667 million. Swan Lake, 33.5 million, which is something that is very true to us. Swan Lake is one of our biggest and most celebrated ballets in our repertoire. And then American Ballet Theater, before we had even joined the platform, had 1.3 million views. And now that we have joined a few months ago, it has doubled to 3.1 million views. So, I mean, it was just pretty insane to see the opportunity space that was already existing for us before we even tapped into the channel. Um, so that was something that was obviously hugely attractive to us and really exciting. And our whole team, Sarah and I and and beyond, got on the, the platform and just had so much fun, just like really falling into the rabbit hole of like the creative opportunity and opportunity for collaboration, um, which leads to artist led innovation, because a lot of our dancers, myself included, were getting on to the platform and sort of sussing out the space and seeing what we could do and how we could take our dancing um, to that space. Because it's such a it's such a personal experience to be on TikTok and you're really invited into someone's space. And oftentimes ballet is seen as something that's maybe too elite for something like that. So it was really fun to pair this juxtaposition of like a super, super um, like highbrow art form and put it on a platform that delivers it in a really like fun and processable way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've been collaborating with Connor and all of our dancers on content creation and strategy. Artist led innovation is something that's really a part of our DNA. Um, our, our artists are our creators and uh, we really make a point to develop a relationship with them so that we can tell their stories. And we try to empower them by you know, hosting tutorials on communication platforms and social media platforms and um, inviting them to create content with us. And Connor has been the most, he's, he's Shin is a, the best partner you could ever dream of. Um, it really gives our platforms that uh, bird's eye view, um, fly on the wall, so to speak, um, real uh, behind the scenes engagement and storytelling. And Connor um, is just a wonderful content creator for, with us and taps the rest of the company often to help us create this content. Yeah, I definitely think when you have a really open and free flowing dialogue with the artists of an institution, it just opens up this opportunity for really fun and engaging content because it's like, we have ideas about what we wanna do, but then when you have a team that's really keeping keeping a grip on the pulse of like what's happening and what's trending, we can really work collaboratively to make something like super fun. Cause of course all of the dancers are excited about it. Actually part of our process of getting onto the platform of TikTok is we worked um, in tandem with Prism and we had a map, we had like a, a big class that we offered on Zoom for all of our dancers to participate in. And we did essentially what Adrian just did, which was so fun was to watch videos learn how to make them, give tutorials on actually creating those videos and sort of just mulling over ideas of things that could be fun for us to share on our page. What has, um, you know, we're, we're running the fast train here, um, content that has worked well, content that has not worked well. We saw some videos that worked well, talk us through that and then talk us through what, what didn't may have not worked as well. Okay, so the interesting thing, I'll try and talk quickly. The interesting thing about um, TikTok is it is it is a different platform from other social media platforms in the sense that what is so fun about it is it is creation for creation's sake. As, as you mentioned, Eric, once upon a time, it's not as much of a social media network as it is just this really fun creative space. Um, so in an effort to figure out, to test all of our, our, our limits and just the experience of being on TikTok, we did one post that was, 
in alignment with a trend, which is the wipe it down challenge, which was super viral for a long period of time, which is where you would like wipe down on a mirror and maybe your outfit would change or your hair or your makeup. And then it would do this back and forth. And it was just Let's a fun optical. Yeah, we can watch it yeah. if, if it's queued up. Um, it's queued up. Wipe, wipe, wipe it down. Wipe, 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 wipe it down. Wipe, wipe, wipe. <laughs> so that was a video that we made with one of our principal dancers, Devin Tusher, and we used it as an opportunity to um, yeah, advertise an event that we were doing uh, with Center Stage. The movie. And it really didn't take off because people <laughs> saw that we were advertising an event and not just, you know, jumping on the trend. It was, we clearly had an agenda behind the post and it made us realize we need to just go with the flow. <laughs> Um, on TikTok and act fast as well. Like that challenge had been out there for a while. So we were a little um, late to the game on it. And one um, point I'd like to make, I know we're running over our time, I apologize, is that we have the backing from our leadership, our chief marketing officer, Aaron Brownie, and our executive director, uh, Kara Barnett, to really experiment and flex our storytelling and our mission, vision, core values. And they know that we may make mistakes or slip up every once in a while in our storytelling, but it's important to them that we act fast and we communicate the way that people are communicating on TikTok. And so uh, that is something that we're grateful for and we're able to just experiment and try to act fast, which is important. And to connect with this new audience. There's so many like Gen Z people on there that maybe aren't on our Instagram. So it's been wonderful to connect with them and and share share our content. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I love all those points. And we will welcome you back in 10 minutes uh, for the Q&A so you can share more. But uh, Connor, Sarah, thank you so, so much. And uh, now we're gonna watch some content from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History and then welcome Sloan. I'm Tim Pierce from Carnegie Museum of Natural History with a snail joke for you. But first, a fun fact. This purple snail in the genus Janthina blows bubbles and then it floats around on this bubble raft its whole life. And when they bump into a jellyfish, the snail eats the jellyfish. <laughs> and then sometimes the wind blows the wrong way and all of these snails end up on the shore. They get marooned. These purple snails are marooned. Oh, snails, I hope you have a marvelous day. Barack Obama went to a costume party. He was giving his wife a piggyback ride. And the host of the party said, Welcome, Mr. President. What are you dressed up as? And Barack Obama said, I'm a snail. That's Michelle on my back. All right. Um, let's welcome Sloan. Hi, Sloan. Hi, Eric. Um, I'm Sloan McRae. I'm a white male with also a shaved head and a dark brown beard. And I'm wearing a dark gray shirt that um, has our dinosaur logo on it. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm talking to you from the historical lands of the Osage, the Shawnee, the Lenape, the Seneca, the Wyandot, the Catawba, and the Monongahela. We have a uh, a rich uh, heritage here in Pittsburgh. And um, I'm, I'm excited to be here and love talking about TikTok. Awesome. So why don't you tell us a bit about your TikTok journey so far at the museum? Sure. So our goal has, with all of our, all of our social media, has always been to expand, uh, enhance our brand awareness and to also explain what natural history means because there's an awful lot of confusion. The word history kind of takes over that phrase and people don't know that, you know, we're scientists, we're naturalists and history is past tense. And we have researchers, uh, you know, industry leading researchers doing science right now. So um, you know, we, we, all of our social media strategies try to address those things as well as, you know, getting people in our doors, obviously. Um, it's, it's off, we often with our social media do PR for science and scientists. And we live in an age now when there's a lot of skepticism and there's a lot of mystery and, mi and just misunderstanding around scientists. So if we can show them as they are, as accessible and human and, and funny, and you know, we're, we're all a little nerdy, it's, it's been pretty successful. 
Um, so for TikTok, we that that's been our TikTok goal, and we had all these snail jokes from Tim Pierce. Um, we we filmed like a like a year's supply of them, so that we would just launch them on on hashtag Mollusk Monday every Monday, and they never really took off among the other social media platforms. So Aaron Sutherland, our our uh, great um, writer for our marketing team, she said, "Why don't we try TikTok?" So we tried TikTok on uh, January 17. We we did that. Um, we we hit, dropped that Michelle Obama video that you saw, and it just so happens to be Michelle Obama's birthday on January 17, and she was trending like crazy. And we had hundreds of thousands of views before we knew what was going on. And um, sometimes it's better to be uh, lucky than good, and we were we were lucky in this point. Um. So from a, a content perspective, um, what has worked for you and what has not worked and what have you learned? Um, what's, what's worked the most is if there's a surprise. So either, and sort of a dramatic structure. So if there's a little you know, punchline for Tim's videos, or if there's a little a nugget that you can digest and take with you and remember, that has, that has worked well and that's that's racked up the views and yeah that's what we like to tell our marketing team a spoonful of sugar helps the education go down um what has not worked is kind of like what connor and sarah were saying it's anything you know remotely call to action driven self-serving agenda ish you know and we've never been heavy-handed on these things but we uh we had, we reopened our museum to the public back uh at the end of june and we thought oh you know Boom, we have all these TikTok fans. We'll announce it to them. And it was sort of greeted with, you know, wasn't a hit because it, it you know, it's not what TikTok does. TikTok. Yeah, let's watch it. Oh, yeah. Hello, I'm Tim Pierce at Carnegie Museum of Natural History with a snail joke for you. That famous theoretical physicist snail, Snailbert Einstein, finally finished that book he's been working on, A Theory of Relativity. It's about time. And speaking of about time, the museum is finally opening up to the public on the 29th of June. We welcome you all back. I mean, that's wild because it's just like the rest of your content and then you appended a small CTA or message, marketing message at the end. Yeah, and it's just that people, people saw through it, I think, you know, and um, not, you didn't get out, you know, outraged messages or anything, but it just wasn't as, it wasn't, the, the TikTok spirit. Yeah, it's the, it just goes to show how smart that algorithm is. It's mm -hmm. really just like beyond sort of the other algorithms we've, we've ever dealt with on social media. Yeah, which, which takes kind of a while to, to understand because it, it goes against a lot of, as marketers, it goes against a lot of our instincts and a lot of the pressure we get from upstairs, you know, like make it, make it translate to sales. Yeah. And how have you seen it? Um, have you seen any connection to uh, sales or, or benefits from, from the effort you're putting in? Yes. Um, and and kind of yes with an asterisk, because, um, you know, as we reopen and navigate our way through the, the uh, you know, our new pandemic COVID safety measures and convince people that we're offering a safe experience, you know, we're, we're seeing fractions of our former visitation. So, however, we are getting demand um, when people arrive. Where's Tim Pierce? That's the that's the mollusk guy. Um, uh, we had a, a he did a, a virtual um, sort of webinar about mollusks from the museum last Saturday, and people showed up in person to to see him. So a, a, a small crowd gathered, and as you saw there, we we put a mollusk display on the floor in an area which is called Discovery Base Camp and has formerly had a lot of touchables and a lot of interactives for kids. And we've taken a lot of those off the floor and, and we, we repopulated the, the place with a, for, I think for the first time in a while anyway, a, a mollusk uh, collection with a video from Tim Pierce and some jokes that you can only get if you visit. So we can be a little, we can be a little mercantile about it. Can you talk about how big your marketing team is and how you're uh, staffing creating this content in addition to every everything else you have to do? Sure, we're only seven, um, and we do you know we do um, marketing and PR, and then we also do kind of all the production behind all of our video content. And we're we're lucky to 
during the pandemic, we were able to sort of coach a lot of our colleagues across the museum from the education teams, from the science teams, to just record uh, a Zoom video with some compelling visuals and we'll do the rest. And you know, that um, helped us when we, you know, we really couldn't travel anywhere or talk to anybody in person. So we were able to get a wealth of content. Um, we have, we were kind of putting one video out a day um, just to, um, Partly fulfill. We have an agreement with TikTok, part of the Creative Learning Fund. So we're we're anchoring hopefully each video with with a strong visual and one you know easily digestible lesson to kind of learn. And we're we're also seeing what what gains traction and what doesn't. And it's it's nice to have that um, kind of permission to to try and and sometimes succeed and then sometimes fail and learn. Amazing. So. Um... Our 10 minutes is up. I'm gonna bring back everybody. Thank you so much, Sloan. And we're gonna have time for uh, 15 minutes of questions. Welcome back, everybody. Um, getting a little feedback here, there we go. So one of the themes of questions and my um, back, backstage team here compiled all your questions to make it really easy. And I think one of the themes is compensation of your creators. Uh, are you paying dancers? How does that work? Are you are you paying Tim Pierce? Um, anything you can talk about that? I mean, sorry, Tim, we're not uh, paying you for the extra content. Um, but, uh, you know, we are. I think, but we are giving him a lot of exposure. That that I think uh, for him is, I think he's he's uh, in very good naturedly surprised by his kind of sudden stardom. Um, so I think, you know, he's, he's benefiting and his research is benefiting from, you know, in some circles being a household name all of a sudden. Yeah. Talk about the numbers his videos get. So the, um, the most popular one, which was the one with the, the first one you saw, I think that has 2.2 million views right now. And the Michelle Obama one has 1.7 million views. So for us, you know, we, Pittsburgh is a small market. We only have 60,000 Facebook followers, which is comparable to our, our in-market peers, you know, that for us, that is success on a scale. We have not. Yeah. The, I mean, just the, um, when something hits viral on TikTok, it happens fast and it happens big, which mm -hmm. is just like, think about the organic views you're getting on any other social platform. It just doesn't come near to those, those numbers. And I think it is to underscore what Connor said around, it's a social network in a way, but it's like, you're not necessarily like following your friends. You can, but the most of the experience is about seeing content that's that's not from from your friends or family. Um, the So I wanna to turn to ABT with the same question. Sure, um, so Connor is a paid member of our team, uh, of the marketing team. And then for asking our dancers to help participate and create content, we uh, we typically ask them during periods when they are on contract or in contract with uh, American Ballet Theater, and we also see, you know, this strategy as a service to them to build their personal brand portfolio um, and storytelling um, and amplify their voices. Uh, and we provide, you know tutorials, like I said, to our dancers and then cross post and really try to elevate their profile um, and help them you know, build their personal brand in addition to um, asking them to really join us and be partners with us. How does ABT think about um, encouraging, you know, dancers obviously creating content specifically uh, with the, the branded ABT account? Um, and you have many dancers who have very uh, large social followings um, on various social platforms. How are you, how are you talking about that? How are you uh, thinking about that as an organization? It's top of mind all the time. Um, for example, we just launched yesterday two children's books with Random House Children's Books, um, and you know we emailed all of our dancers and asked us ask them if they'd be willing to promote pages where they're illustrated and help us, you know, amplify, you know, not only the branded content with the mother brand, but, you know, push it out on their, their channels. And then we would cross post it on ours. So it's really this symbiotic relationship where, um, you know, we try to elevate their, 
personal profiles, and then they also um, help us amplify and spread the word about our events so that all boats rise and the mother brand is, is there as well. Let's talk about um, analytics. That was a question that came up. Um, what tools are you using to understand the engagement? How are you, um, how do you feel about the, the native analytics in the um, TikTok platform? Well, I'm, I can speak from like an engagement standpoint. We haven't really tried too much with the hashtags, at least for TikTok. Like we've done very minimal, well, I'm sorry, my TikTok is playing. Um, we've done very minimal sorts of tags and things, but we also have found it to be a huge success to engage with your commenters, engage with your followers. People like that sort of like two-way relationship. So it doesn't feel like they're just like, talking to a wall. Um, so I, I've seen a huge increase with engagement and followers due to that on all platforms. But TikTok, there's been an incredibly positive response. People are excited to see what's coming from us. And generally, the, the feedback is all very enthusiastic. Sloan, do you have anything to add? We've, we've kind of done it um, more in just looking at how it's performing and, and sort of figuring out what's, what's the recipe. So that's been, hasn't really been the, the TikTok analytics themselves, but you know, this thing that's 20 seconds long, has a clear message, has a fun message and maybe a surprise. And uh, it's, it's outside and we haven't done an outside video for a while, say, that'll go crazy. This, this one, you know, is a little long to get to the thing. It's, it's, it's not going to do as well. So we've kind of, been dramaturgs about it, I guess, which is, um, which uh, is our, our most success. Are you able to tell really quickly if something's a hit or if you think it's going to be a dud? Yeah. Not our duds, but you know what I mean. That's the thing too, like like the way the engagements work, there there aren't really any duds. You know, like if I would I would take any of our if you look at you know number of views number of likes number of in that ratio it's always uh for us blows the other social media platforms out of the water in terms of just the, the rates um but yeah if, if it if it, we post something at 1 p.m and you know it it has 2,000 views in an hour that means this is one of our modest ones you can the momentum happens suddenly and you can just you can just tell yeah it happens fast when it's a good one, it, it blows up really quickly. There's questions about um, audio and um, how you're, you know, the talking about the audio platform that's, you know, obviously as Adrian showed, available on the platform. Um, can music, the question is, can music organizations make their own audio available? Who wants to take that? Um, I mean, I guess I can take that. Um, basically, you can create your own original audio of basically anything. Um, be it just speaking, or there are a lot of musicians who, you know, play their instrument just, you know, right there, and that becomes their original audio. Um, just remember that people can then, if they find that audio, use it too, uh, which is actually very fun a lot of the time. <laughs> I was gonna say too, because I saw this question came up a lot about having a brand versus a pro account. And we were actually really lucky working in tandem with this Prism agency and having a contact at TikTok that we actually became verified as a brand account before we even launched our first post, um, which was awesome. But it actually ended up throwing a big roadblock in our path because a lot of music is restricted from those brand verified accounts. So we did a lot of research and found out that like 30% of major trends, which is a huge part of TikTok is staying on trend. And I do think that's a good way to get rewarded by users with high levels of engagement and likes and views is when you are really quick to jump on the, the popular trends. But it is 30% of licensed music is probably where the most of the trends are. So outside of that space, there's like a really large space for opportunity with like different songs that are available to us, but it, it was limiting and it definitely like threw a wrench our way when we were trying to launch with all these songs that we had selected that were no longer available to us. So it's definitely something to consider when like setting up your account. And audio is such a big part of the experience. Um, Adrian, that's something you've talked about. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, it the audio, 
it's it's just such an interesting element to like the meme culture of TikTok that I haven't seen replicated anywhere else. Um, but I will say that also hasn't precluded like the deaf community from being like super involved in TikTok as well. I've seen so many amazing like ASL accounts and like interpreters and things like that. So the, it just, there's so much creative freedom in there that I know it can seem a little intimidating at first, but the more time you spend on the platform, the more you'll see like just how people are utilizing sound. It's, it's really, really fun. Um, question coming up around the, you know, the global reach of TikTok. Um, I think this is, the question is, how did you target content to your local market? And I think that's such an, an interesting question in this moment where um, so many arts organizations are, are focusing on digital programming, expanding audiences beyond your um, actual, you know, DMA, um, to use a marketing term. But how do you, how do you think about content versus uh, local versus global on TikTok? Our rationale is the local people are on there too, you know. So, and and since we're not doing anything that's sort of like absolute hard marketing at them, you know, come see this exhibition before it closes, kind of thing. It almost doesn't matter, you know. There, there are there are Pittsburghers along for the ride, and, and we know that our we have an international audience as well. And from ABT's perspective, we're um, we're a touring company, so. Uh, we look forward to the day where we can tour again. And our, uh, you know, our mission is to reach the widest possible audience. And the pandemic has given us a an opportunity and the platform of TikTok gives us an op opportunity to just, you know, really create content for everyone and, and just try to inspire a love of ballet. Um, so we're really not thinking uh, about our specific, you know, New York City headquartered market. Um, we're trying to really generate content that everyone can just enjoy um, and makes ballet less intimidating and more inviting. Yeah. Make awesome content. And that's what that algorithm is really yeah, real cool. I'm encouraging you to do. And, and it works, which is why I think the platform is so addictive. Uh, for those of you who don't have an account, just log on, put in your interests, and start scrolling. And the people get smart within, you know, 60 seconds, and then you'll be sucked in, and it will make you smile. It will make you happy. It is such a, a amazing escape, um, which is why we wanted to have this uh, panel today. So we have three minutes left. Um, what a fantastic panel. I don't know if anyone has any final thoughts. I'll give you a couple seconds if there's anything you want to make sure uh, to add before we, we end today. Um. It's it's for us. It's been just a joyful experience. I like someone else has said. You know, 2020 has been rough, and this has been a, a bright moment. The comments that we get are so different than other social media platforms, like virtually devoid of trolls. And it's it's just it it, it kind of restored my faith in humanity a bit. And we also learned, you know, what we what what of our offerings and what of our science is actually popular and has a mainstream audience. Yeah, I would just say don't be scared to experiment with what your content is. And it's a really fun place to experiment, but also to connect and collaborate like we spoke about earlier, like utilizing the sounds feature and the duet feature, which maybe we'll talk about another time. But there's so many features that connect you with other people in a very creative and innovative way. And whether it exists on your stages or in your museums or anything else, it's a really fun place for like a very low risk to invite that sort of partnership. And it's it's so fun, it's so fun. And I would say, um, you know, ABT's dancers are Gen Z and millennials. And so to be able to tell their stories in a way that um, shares their artistry with their peers, uh, that's so different from what we produce on the stage, is just super fun and a huge opportunity for us to, to build new audiences and build a community. All right, thank you so much to, to our guests. This was so fun putting it together. Uh, really in, enjoyed and thank you for spending your uh, Thursday afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are with us. And if you enjoyed today, please consider joining us October 22nd and 23rd for Boot Camp 2020, Envisioning a New Future for the Arts. I'm so excited for our amazing lineup of speakers and performers 
who will cover digital programming, digital marketing, leadership, wellness, equity, and inclusion. We've worked incredibly hard to put together a conference that we're very proud of and very much speaks to the challenges facing arts organizations in uh, 2020. We also try to make it really accessible and, and affordable. I really hope you can join us. I want to thank again our guests, Christopher Williams, Adrian Yablin, Sarah Doolin Roy, Connor Holloway, Sloan McRae, and I really want to thank the CI Pass Interactive Marketing and Operations team who make this so seamless and work behind the scenes to get you signed up, get you excited, and uh, run the whole production. Um, also, thank you to the whole CI team who is watching. And um, everybody have a wonderful day.